So in this video, we're going to talk about why you should always use a probiotic for any type of liver problem. That includes a fatty liver, a liver that has inflammation, as in hepatitis, or an advanced liver problem where you have cirrhosis, which is scar tissue of the liver. And by the way, one real simple way to know if you have a fatty liver is just to look down and see if you can see your feet, because what happens, if your belly is sticking out, you have a fatty liver. And an ultrasound will also pick it up very easily. So the question is, why would a friendly bacteria in your colon help your liver, since they're in two different locations? Well, probiotics prevent something called bacterial translocation. Let me kind of define that. When there's liver damage, the bacteria in your colon, which is the large intestine, have the ability to migrate or travel beyond the wall of your colon into your lymphatic system. So the bacteria are translocating in a different place. Once this bacteria gets into the lymphatic system, that's where you have all sorts of immune reactions and you're triggering cytokines in a big way. So you're going to get inflammation. You're also going to increase something called endotoxins, which is kind of a byproduct of bacteria. And you're going to increase TNF-alpha, which are basically cytokines that create inflammation, fatigue, and other symptoms. Now, the other cool thing about probiotics is it reduces ammonia. One of the side effects of advanced liver problems is an excessive amount of ammonia that's in your blood that travels into the brain. And ammonia is a neurotoxin. So it not only affects your mood, but your memory, your focus. It can even get so bad where actually you can go into a coma. Taking a probiotic, which is a friendly bacteria, will actually reduce the unfriendly bacteria that are making excessive amounts of ammonia. So taking probiotics or getting probiotics from your food, kombucha tea, sauerkraut, kimchi, even kefir, make sure it's not sweetened, make sure it's plain, can significantly reduce symptoms associated with liver disease, as well as slow down fibrosis and reduce ammonia. So in summary, I just wanted to kind of bring your awareness on a real simple solution to a lot of the symptoms and collateral damage that occurs when you have liver damage. And if you're new to my channel and you don't know what to eat, I put a link down below so you can get more data on that. I'd like to discuss uh, some really key points about when to take probiotics or even consuming probiotic foods, because how are those microbes going to survive strong stomach acid in your stomach? So do they survive the stomach at all? That's the topic of today. Now, there's a couple things you need to know about microbes. Microbes literally run the world. They convert carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and sulfur to available forms that plants and animals can use, that all life forms can use. I mean, even photosynthesis, right? Everyone thinks that the plant is responsible for most of the photosynthesis, where they're converting light and air and water into these biochemicals and fuel. But did you know that the microbes contribute to photosynthesis the most? So you have microbes in the soil, you have microbes in the roots, you have microbes in the plants, you have microbes in animals, you've got microbes in and on our bodies. In fact, there are 10x more microbes living inside and on our bodies than our cells. And so our bodies uh, are mostly composed of microbes. And all plants and animals have a very close, important relationship in that they help make nutrients available. They provide immune protection. They protect against pathogens. They help you detoxify. They help you digest food. They help make vitamins. They help digest things that you can't digest like fiber. Some medications are also uh, made for microbes, like antibiotics. They're made for microbes. And as a side note, any time you take an antibiotic, always at the same time, take a probiotic just to prevent a candida infection, because it's the microbes that keep this candida in check. And when you take an antibiotic, it might kill off a good uh, portion of those microbes, but the ones that don't die become now resistant to the microbes and they become stronger and harder to kill. This is why it's not a good idea to take a lot of antibiotics. Uh, and then we have fermented foods, right? All the foods that you probably love, you have breads, chocolate, cheese, beer, wine, sourdough bread, 
a pizza crust, anything that's fermented comes from microbes. And a lot of the information that you read about uh, microbes being killed by the stomach acids come from like one small study. I think it was in 2014 by the University uh, College of London. They just measured eight uh, probiotics. And then they measured how these eight uh, probiotics uh, survived the stomach acids and only one of them survived. That's an area that's really understudied, but you have hydrochloric acid uh, that can kill microbes if it's strong enough, but you also have the bile salts that can also affect the microbiome. Because one purpose of bile is to help keep the microbes from existing in the small intestine, preventing this thing called small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, where you're getting bloated no matter what you eat. Okay, so the thing you need to know, the stomach uh, normally should be between one and three, which as far as the acidity of that hydrochloric acid. That's extremely acid. And acid does kill many microbes. Not all of them, but uh, a good portion of them. And certain microbes can live in certain pHs. They're very, very resilient. Some microbes can live without oxygen. So a normal, healthy stomach with a young person, uh, the pH should be between one and three, right? But as we age, we lose that pH. And when I was in practice, I used to test the pH in the stomach of a lot of patients. And very rarely would I ever find anyone with a pH of one to three, right? It was usually four or five, sometimes six, sometimes even seven. And three big purposes of that stomach being very, very acidic is for you to digest protein, uh, kill pathogens, prevent microbes from going through the stomach, and then the third thing is to help you absorb minerals. So here are some things that you can do to increase the survivability of these microbes for a probiotic going through the stomach. You can dilute the acid by taking the probiotic or probiotic foods, and preferably after the meal. Also, the time of day can influence uh, the pH of your stomach. Earlier in the day, the pH is less acidic. Like in the morning, it's about a four. And then, of course, I don't recommend doing breakfast, but if you do breakfast, that would probably be the best time to take it. But maybe you take your probiotics um, at your first meal at lunch or even at dinner, because just the fact that you're diluting this acid with food is going to help the survivability. And so we're dealing with how acid something is and how long those microbes are exposed to that acid. So let's say, for example, uh, you're fasting and you want to take probiotics. Maybe you just drink more water when you take them, diluting some of the acid allowing limited exposure because the water is going to kind of go through the stomach pretty fast, and so are the probiotics. Now, when we take uh, the probiotics in fermented vegetables like sauerkraut or kimchi, we're dealing with different microbes like the lactic acid bacillus, and there are a whole family or community of those. They're not just one, and those microbes can survive a pH of 2.5 for three hours. And the other thing you need to know when you take a probiotic is uh, Probably not the best thing to take it when you're drinking apple cider vinegar with the water or even when you add the lemon water because both of those are acidic. Take it at a different time of the day. And just as a side note, the probiotics that I recommend um, mostly do survive the stomach pH, even if it is a stronger pH. And another point about like kefir or yogurt, um, I like taking a little kefir. Okay, That's a little bit better than yogurt unless you find a really good source like Bulgarian yogurt. And I take a little bit of that after the meal. And maybe I'll put some uh, Lily's um, sugar-free chocolate chips in there. But that way, the microbes have the best chance of surviving. You have to also realize that when you consume raw plants grown on soil, there's actually microbes in those plants too. And so they can potentially act as a probiotic. But unfortunately, a lot of the vegetables that we eat at the grocery store are not grown on soils, especially in the winter. Maybe they're grown hydroponically or even aeroponically or grown in some spongy type material or medium that doesn't give you the microbes that soil-based plants will give you. Now, since I did touch on this condition, which, which is becoming more popular, SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, I did a really good video on that. You should check it out. I put it up right here.